Last week, I dropped a video that pretty much called out a lot of people and told you that you suck at hacking and I gave you the reasons why. And that kind of started a lot of discussion, a lot of DMs, a lot of comments around wanting to hear more, wanting a part two. And also, I got some really, really good questions indirectly from people that I just talked to on Twitter and a few people that I mentor and talk to regularly also brought up some points that I thought, why not just address them all in a video? And hopefully it helps other people and you guys that are watching this video to get better and get better at hacking or bug bounty hunting or web hacking or whatever it is. So I mentioned that, you know, I sat down and talked to a couple of people after the video dropped and majority of the questions kind of sounded the same indirectly. They, they all wanted to know the same thing. And that was, how did you get good? How did you become better or how did you progress as a web hacker? And how did you just become good at bug bounty hunting, especially with applications that millions of times has been tested or hundreds of other people or top hackers have looked at it. So there's already been people that have looked at this application. How did you become good? How did you find a way and build a methodology that helped you find better bugs? And I think the right way to do it is to approach it throughout this video. But before we do that, you got to do me a favor. If you haven't already, you have to hit that subscribe. We're at 85,000 subscribers. Are we at 85,000 subscribers? We are at 85 and we are on the road to getting to a hundred thousand. So if you haven't already join the channel, become a homie, subscribe and hit that bell notification. So you don't miss the content that I post. And of course, if you are a homie, you already know that every Monday we come up with new content, including this one. So hit that subscribe button and let's jump into our video. So there are three things that I came up with when I was asked, how did you become better? Or how do you approach these applications to become better or not worry about the fact that other people have looked at it? And it came down to three different things. The first one is knowing the context of where these vulnerabilities happen. For example, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video on SSRF and I mentioned that in a lot of comments on a Twitter post that someone posted a login page, a lot of people were saying test for SSRF. And I noticed that a lot of people either don't understand the vulnerability, but they also don't understand the context of where they should look for these vulnerabilities. And in a login page, typically, I don't see a reason why there would be an SSRF unless they're doing some weird sign-in URL passing of some sort in the parameter where it sends a request to another application or something like that. But on its own, that is not the first thing I will check. So for example, for a login page, I will look for things like an XSS or a CSRF maybe. I will look for SQL injection. I will look for an authentication bypass or a login bypass of some sort, not something like SSRF or IDOR because there is nothing to look for an IDOR in a login page, for example, or at least not in a lot of the common login pages. So if you don't know the context of where to look for these vulnerabilities, you're going to struggle while you look for them, whether it's on a pen test or engagement or just doing bug bounty hunting in general. And the second one is that kind of goes hand in hand is when you look at context, you also are supposed to pay attention to small details. That is things like the response that comes back, if it's changing in response size, if something is changed because a parameter you provided to it, or looking at all the different calls that are being made when you load a page or you pass something to the page or submit something to the form, for example, and seeing all these different requests that are being made. When I talked to a couple of people about this, the number one question was, how many open repeater tabs do you have? And I kind of took a look and kind of looked at how I organize all of them. And the number was a lot. I have three, 400 tabs open sometimes. And that's not because I like to just open up tabs, but every time something interesting happens, I send it to repeater and I name it. So for example, if you're looking at a page and you're loading your profile, for example, and that page makes six different API calls to fetch its data, and each of those have a different integer value or a different API call, those are six different entry points that you can look for IDOR or things that are vulnerable because you can see all these different calls and you can just have the assumption that goes, okay, I see an integer, I see an API call, I'm gonna test the API, I'm gonna look for IDOR, and I'm gonna see what other calls are on this particular NPI endpoint. So paying attention to the small details, whether it's in the DOM, whether it's in the calls, just watching things happen and unfold as you're testing things is a huge part of becoming good at bug bounties or web hacking in general, which also brings me to the last point for this video, which is the third thing is the hacker mindset. And by hacker mindset could mean a lot of different things depending on who you talk to. But the thing that really made a huge difference in how I approach applications and how I approach bug bounties and hacking was 
telling myself that I want to think like an adversary or a cyber criminal. If I was a cyber criminal hacking on this bug bounty program or hacking on this application that I'm doing a pen test for, what is the absolute worst case I can do that is not a remote command execution? So it's not an RCE because RCE could be one of the worst things you can do. But outside of an RCE, what are some other worst things that I can do to this application? So if you look at my profile, for example, at, on Airbnb, I'm one of the top hackers. I was the top hacker for years there. The biggest thing that I found was the customer data is very important. So for example, if they store your address, they display the address in a number of different ways. So my goal was, how do I find different ways to leak my address by looking at all these different API calls and seeing if I can exploit them as another user where it could give me access to that particular person's address. So it's just finding a what, saying, hey, this is what I want to find. These are all the different ways that I can find this information and making it my mission to find a way to leak it. That's an example of just looking at an application like Airbnb, but you can also go as far as looking at other things of like, hey, if I'm this big company, if they're continuously integrating and creating programs or applications, what if I break into an infrastructure and one of them is connected to some other application where I can SSRF and get into the network? So you really have to think about the adversary mindset of saying, hey, how do I break into this company? What is important to them? And just changing the mindset of how you approach an application from a perspective of a cyber criminal without being a cyber criminal and being able to find vulnerabilities that are valuable to this company. And then bonus points. I know I said there's three points, but I really want to add a bonus point to this is the, the most important thing to look at is the functionality of a site, which, is, which goes hand in hand with the attention to small detail. But it's really looking at what are these different functionalities that a site offers? So if a site offers different user models, if different permissions, what are the things that I can do? What are the different permissions? What do they have access to that the other users don't have access to? What are other functionalities they have access to? And within those functionalities, what are the most important ones to me as a hacker? So for example, when I go to an application, like an enterprise application that has different permissions, I look at the functionality and I go, okay, a file upload could be very interesting. I go and prioritize the file upload first, then the integrations, then so on. So you want to have this list of functionalities that you look for based on the user roles and permissions and find different vulnerabilities and chain them together. So those are the main three things with the bonus, the four things that I think are really important. If you want to become better at hacking, let me know if this helps. And if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. I've also opened up the subscription or the paid subscription model so you can become a Nahomi and support the channel. I think it's like $5. You can be a subscriber, a paid subscriber, and you get private videos and some of my unreleased videos and you get access to videos like this early before they get released. Okay, that's it. I will see you all next week in the next video. Peace.